unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Today, I wanted to talk about a demon spirit that people never go in counseling rooms for prayers about. Do you understand? All my years of counseling, and I can tell you every man of God here who has counseled people. People come for counseling, I have a spirit of uh, sickness, right? I have a perverse spirit, apostle pray for me. I have a spirit of temper, hot temper. I have a spirit of anger, right? It's the one spirit that is too hard to recognize in individuals. Yet, it is the number one destroyer of ministers and ministry. It's called the spirit of gossip and slander. Right. I've never been there and somebody came and said, Musuban Sabirolu Gamborunji. Apostle Sabira slander it is there. But they can come for anything. Apostle, I have a spirit of uh, it, I have it. We rebuke it, Apostle. So even when we are rebuking, it is the one spirit men of God never rebuke. Because it's not put on the table. Or the possessors of that spirit don't know that they have it. I've seen ministries where men have committed adultery and they are restored. Adultery doesn't break churches. I've seen men who have touched the paths of the church and they've been restored. Stealing doesn't break churches. But gossip and slander has broken ministries like you can never imagine. It's not the weakness of the people in the house. It is the spirit at work in the body of Christ called gossip and slander. That spirit has destroyed the church to extents and form that you can never imagine. It has destroyed great ministries, great relationships. David had a wonderful relationship with Saul. The scriptures are very clear. And then one time the servants of Saul came and misinformed Saul about David. And Saul waged war against David based on rumor and false report. Are we together? And that day Israel was split. There are many examples in the scriptures that still point to the same thing. But it's the one thing we ignore. Today I'm going to show you the gravity of that spirit. I'm going to expose it. You understand? Eh? I'm going to expose it. I fear that either somebody will run mad or something, but I'm going to expose it to the core. Praise the Lord. If you have it, buckle your seatbelts. Praise the Lord. It will leave you and you stay. <laughs> Say amen. amen. So what is gossip? If you're intending to write notes. Gossip is sometimes false information, but sometimes it's also not necessarily false information. But the spirit and intent of it is to destroy people. Do you understand? The essence of that is destruction of the lives of men. Are we together? Are we together? Gossip and slander 
Their end is for the destruction of men. That is why the book of Proverbs says that the words of a talebearer are as wounds. Meaning that when somebody starts to gossip about an individual in the spirit realm, they create wounds on a man's soul. Praise the Lord. They create wounds. That is why some of you sometimes dream dreams when you're being shot at. Right? People are shooting at you or something or they shot someone. Usually those are darts of gossip and slander. It goes to the man's soul. When a man slanders and gossips another, they wound another man's soul. Praise the Lord. Yes, thank you. 26, 22. He says, the words of a tell bearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So sometimes it's not that the person you've slandered even knows about it, but you're wounding them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of Simeon and Levi. Genesis chapter 49 verses 5. He says, Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of credity are in their habitation. They have instruments of credity. Some people have instruments of credity in their habitation. And the Bible says, O oh my soul, come not thou unto their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall all together one of the instruments of quality is gossip and slander one of them some people have instruments of quality they walk with them their spirits are cruel they walk with them in their spirits they don't know that they are wounding innocent souls. And some do it out of anger. Some do it out of just, they love it. In, in the Simeon and Levi case, it was an anger issue. The next verse, he said, cursed be their anger. Because when you have an anger issue, many times you attract things around you that you might never fix. Hallelujah. It is the one spirit that disqualifies the ministry of grace. The one spirit in this life that disqualifies the ministry of grace is gossip and slander. Why? Because, number one, every time you gossip and slander about an individual, you mean to say you're better than them. Right? You mean to say you are better than them. That's why you're saying this person is this, this person is that, because you are saying that you are better than them. You are not extending the grace they deserve to, forgetting that you're also saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. That spirit brings shame to the gospel and the body of Christ. That is the one thing I know that brings shame to the gospel and the body of Christ. Because every time we expose our own members, we only prove to the world that Jesus does not work. Hallelujah. It's the one thing that brings shame to the gospel. It's the one spirit that also causes a delusion in a man's life to think that because the gossip came on your table, Therefore, you're qualified to judge it. Some of you think that because they've reported to you something, therefore you have the qualification to, fi to fix it or solve it. And sometimes you expose yourself to unnecessary destruction because you're yielding to vain words. There's a scripture I want to show you, I had not planned to show you, but... Um, I will show it to you probably because some of you, somebody here needs to know that it exists. That same spirit I have seen has led to the destruction of other people 
who sit in council of the same. Proverbs 13 verse 20. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He says that he that walketh with a wise man shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Some people are destroyed because they sit in the wrong company. They walk with the wrong people. The Bible is very clear. That blessed is the man who what? Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Some of you, it's not that you even participate in the gossip. No. You sit in it. And you are equally judged because you're sitting in the seat of the scornful and standing in the way of sinners. That is why I'll show you a scripture if I have time. Which says that when you know that men are tail bearers, the Bible says, stay away from them. It's biblical. Because the spirit on them does not only defile you. If they are destroyed, you will be destroyed too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. Begin with verses 5. He says, for this you know, that no homeowner, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of, of Christ and God. Uh -huh. And he says, let no man deceive you, listen, the Bible says, with vain words. For because of these things, the Bible says, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So yes, somebody comes with vain words, they corrupt you. And the wrath of God, the Bible says, comes on people because of this. Some people are not destroyed because they are bad people, but they are destroyed because they hang out with people who are funny. He's your friend, it's true, but you have a destiny bigger than that friendship. And that is the call of God upon your life. Somebody say amen. There are certain people God has not called you to walk with because they never show you Christ. They never show you Christ. As we are building the ministry, we have to build a certain kind of people in the ministry because we need to see Christ. Many people are going to join the ministry who are weak, but if they find you weak, were destroyed as a people. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense? So you sit at council with a man with vain words and the wrath of God comes and destroys everything. Why? Because you don't understand how serious these things are. I have realized that a man who is under this spirit of gossip and slander many times cannot value and does not value the relationship they share with God. And I'm going to prove that. Psalms 15 verses 1. Give me the amplified of that. Psalms 15 verses 1. If you're there you say amen. Psalms 15 verses 1 says, Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle and who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? Who will dwell on your holy hill permanently? Who can dwell in your presence permanently? Who can sit under your glory permanently? Next verse. He who walks and lives uprightly and blameless, who walks rightness and justice and speaks and thinks the truth, the Bible says, in his heart. And what does the next verse say? And he who does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his friend, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor. Those are people who dwell in the presence of God constantly. When you start slandering your neighbor, speaking evil about them, and allowing your tongue to speak evil every time and gossiping, challenges are that you're going to struggle being in the presence of God continuously. It frustrates the anointing of God upon your life. 
If you want God to use you, fix that nonsense. There are people who are stuck, but they are stuck because of what they have done to themselves through that. And I'll prove that later in the scriptures. Because some of you don't know how much you hold yourself spiritually and stay in the same place. Oh, I'm praying. The anointing. God doesn't hear me. Why is it that I'm not walking in the spirit? You must have a purity of heart. Do you know that when the Bible speaks of, um, of men which gossip and slander, it likens them to the serpent, the devil, right? Psalms 140, verse 3. They have sharpened their tongues like what? Like a serpent. Others poison is under their lips. And the psalmist says, seller, think about it. Don't just override it. Think about it. You know, as if you go to think through very clearly, the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan, right? He cannot accuse openly without a body. And the body that he uses is people. Their tongues. Many saints have been used of the devil more than they are used of God. Someone wakes up in the morning and just goes to destroy another. And they go to bed. Do you understand what I'm saying? They go to bed comfortably and they sleep. How do you sleep? You see, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is, right? The first word it puts is love. That's the first fruit of the Spirit, love. Now, many people get this wrong when they read that scripture. When they read the word their Spirit, they think it's the Holy Spirit, no more. So when they say the fruit of the Spirit, they think that the fruit of the Spirit in there is the word no more, which is Spirit which is the Holy Spirit. But the word there for spirit is not the Holy Spirit. The word there for spirit is the human spirit that is regenerated in Christ. It means that the spirit of a man which is born again, the first fruit that comes out of your spirit is love. Hereby we know, the Bible says, that we've been translated from darkness unto light because we pray, because we fast, because we sow seed, no, because we love the brethren. That's how we know that we've been translated from darkness to light. That's how you tell somebody who is born again and who isn't. Sadly, many people think they are born again, but they are not. That is the hardest truth about this. That there are people who think they are born again, but they are not. Why? Because when I met God, the first thing he taught me was love. I can give me as an example, I might not know many of you, but there is one thing I know, is that there is one commandment I don't walk out of. I walk in love always. That's why we are patient with you. That's why we are long-suffering with many of you. It doesn't mean that we are foolish or stupid or indifferent. No. It's the patience to know that maybe this person will change one day. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is love. It is forgiving even when you can't forgive. You don't want to forgive, but you say, let me forgive. Because when a man sees God, I always tell people, when a man has really seen God, leave alone people who claim they see you, have seen God, leave alone deceptions that come after the gifts. When a man has seen God, the highest revelation of seeing God is love. It is love. And gossip and slander is not love. Somebody say amen. Gossip and slander is not love. It cannot be love. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, he, he speaks of a situation where he's saying that if you want to walk in the things of the Spirit and dwell in the presence of God continuously, avoid cheap talk. Some people choose cheap talk to the presence. 
Because you don't love God that much. You don't love God that much. But when you do, like the white people say, certain things have got to give. Certain things have got to give. In the past it used to be a women's thing. But now men are overtaking sometimes. I, it scares me. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 6, verses 16. He says there are six things the Lord hates, even seven which are an abomination. He hates. Go to the 19th verse. A false witness that speaketh life, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God hates it. A man of the spirit will hate it. That's why every time I sit around people who sow discord among people, something in me just rises up to anger. Because they are destroying the people Christ died for. Are we together? They are destroying the people Christ died for. This is the spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Leviticus 19.16, he tells you, you shall not, that's why he warns us, you shall not go down and about as a tell bearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. God warns you, you shall not go up and about as a tell bearer. Because that spirit, eh, it surgeons, right? It, it is restless. He's always walking around people. It can't settle in one place. And I must warn you for you young people. Stay in your houses and your homes. Some of you are visiting homes everywhere. You might not understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. The Bible says they go house to house. 1 Timothy 5.13 They amplify. First Timothy five thirteen. And with all, moreover, the Bible says they go about from house to house. They learn it's a teaching to be idlers. And not only idlers, but gossips and busybodies. Saying what they should not say and talking of things they should not mention. Why don't you stay in your home? Stay in your parents' home. Stay in your hostel. How many of you do I visit? How many of you does, does Pastor Joshua visit? How many of you does Mama Modesta visit? How many of you do the Bukenyas visit? How many of you has Pastor Sam visited? Not because we don't want to reach out to you. But you imagine every morning I'm house to house, learning to be idle. That spirit, when it's on a person, it can't settle in one place. It can't sit in its own home and settle. It has to move. They begin with a visit. After that, they say things they should not say. They talk about things they shouldn't mention. Right? They sow seeds of discord. They create an enmity. They create false statements, silly statements. Before you know that, they go to another home. They visit hostel to hostel because that spirit does door to door. <laughs> it does door to door. It does door to door. You imagine if every door you are going to, you are preaching the gospel instead of gossip. Why don't you mind your own business? The Bible says, work hard with your own hands and have a testimony among us them which are without. How can a man learn to be idle? That's why I pray some of you get jobs. How can a man learn to be idle? It's a learning 
they know how to be idle. And somehow the devil sustains them in their idleness. Somehow he sustains them. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is more serious than many of you assume. Because like I said, it is the one spirit I've never heard that people bring and say Muslim by gossip. Praise the Lord. And God warns us, First Peter 3.10 For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. If you want to live a long happy life. Meaning that some of you are not happy because you speak your tongue is evil. I have noticed for a fact that many people who either sit in the council of the weekend, gossip and slander, who either do it or sit in that council, you examine yourself, you're stuck. I don't even need to examine you. There is enough on your life that proves you're stuck. You're stuck somewhere. In a certain area of your life, you're stuck. Because the spirit world cannot give you certain days in your life when you don't know how to turn your tongue. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible has warned us that if you want to see good days, refrain your tongue from evil. Stop speaking evil. Stop gossip and slander. Stop it. If you know you have a gossip problem, stay at your home. You will not gossip. Or switch off your Facebook and WhatsApp. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help you there. Because you will be putting wounds on men and women. Innocent spirits. Because the thing about gossip, when it finds a ready soul, and amazingly this you will notice to be true, people who gossip attract each other. You can't, I, I don't know how they know each other. You look at some people who don't gossip. Eh? They have their own group. And people who gossip, eh, there is a way they find each other. Even if, so even if they are seated here, they can sense that that person eh, can be my buddy. That's why when a tell bearer comes to you, ask yourself, are you that attractive? Do you understand what I'm saying? When a tell bearer comes to your council, the first question you have to ask yourself, are you that attractive in the spirit that they look like you're a joint heir? <laughs> a partaker of grace? Do you understand what I'm saying? A person opens a case to another person who doesn't hear God, right? And both of them are not hearing God. And they create a certain kind of relationship out of that and the devil starts to rise up through these people and starts to accuse brethren one time I told someone that some people think that proof is a mouthful of words you understand eh? that because somebody says therefore it's proof you understand what I'm saying that because somebody has a note therefore it's proof You have to go past that and hear God for yourself. Many of you, you'll notice when you report issues to me, I don't first judge them. I keep quiet. Yeah, why did the apostle deal with this? It's because I'm waiting to hear God. Because when you're dealing with somebody who gossips and slanders, they will never say, I gossiped and slandered. And they will never say, I lied. They can't. Because it's in their nature to destroy. It's a spirit on them. It's a spirit on them. They can even hear this someone after here and go gossip after here. And destroy another person. Right after this service, right now they can go for lunch and destroy another person. Because it's a spirit. So you walk in the flesh 24 hours. Oh, they told me. Ah, even you, they told you. Oh my God, can you believe it? Ah. Then you create a certain 
fellowship of believers who are told who here who have had can you believe before you know that you're defiling let me tell you when you start walking with God and I'm warning many of you because this will happen in your personal lives the biggest attack and of persecution on your life will be slander and gossip when you meet God the biggest persecution on your life will be slander and gossip John the Baptist was separated by God went into the wilderness to eat locusts and honey Luke 7 tells you when he was in the honey eating locusts and honey the Bible says they said he had a demon the guy wasn't even with them he was in the wilderness eating honey and locusts and the Bible says he was eating honey and locusts and they said he had a demon this is he's not even with them the bigger picture is that the devil knows that this is the voice that is shouting from the wilderness saying prepare ye the way of the Lord for the kingdom of God is nigh repent you've read of stories how Jesus was called a what of Beelzebub the Bible says that the son of man came eating and drinking and lo the Bible says they said for he was a gluttonous man and a wine biber you know what a wine biber is a drunkard Somebody went in council and said to say, Jesus drinks. He's a drunkard. This, the Bible just simply says, the son of man came eating and drinking. He just ate and drank. And a man said, this guy is a glutton and a wine Bible. He's a drunkard. When Jesus was passing, there are some people who used to say, can you believe that guy is a drunkard? What? He drinks? Yeah. Some told me the guy drinks. He drinks, even gets so zonked his clothes out. Can you be? Oh, Come and see. He's going to heal a man. Oh my God! He even heals. Now, yeah, which spirit heals that he's drunk? Oh, it's Belzebu. Because Belzebu's groups. The... <laughs> One time they put him before the council, and the Bible says, "For, for this man goes around the nation." Speaking blasphemies against God and against the law. E. Jesus. They say that he speaks blasphemies. The blasphemies unto God and against the law. They say it, that Jesus did it. And in John he says, Lord, they hated him without cause. Why did they hate him? Was any of those men told by God about Jesus? None. They were all told by different people. But there is always something that qualifies a person later. Because God knows how to redeem people. His own. In the days of Joseph, eh, when they said that he got Potiphar's wife, eh, everybody was convinced. They even arrested him and released him, but they knew he was an ex-convict. But there is a reason why God didn't keep their story and he still kept the story of Joseph. Because what do I say? It means even if it comes how many years, even if it's a hundred years, as long as the Christ is not yet come back. He will always vindicate his own. And those ones who spoke, who knows Potiphar's wife's name? Even me, I don't know it. Because God has a way of destroying it. That kind of testimony. Listen, saint of God, you will live longer than any gossiper. They never win. Slanderers never win. You always win in the end. You always will. Why? Because you stand before God. He called you. He has a covenant with you. You remember when they first wrote about us in the news? Some people thought we were gone. But we stood. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Went through another drama recently. Some of you know it. I don't even want to defile newcomers. People spoke about us. Funeral members. Eh? And I remember my own coming up also. They say this, that we are this, that we are that. And I told them, keep quiet. We will go through this too. And it's coming to an end. Very soon. God has a way of causing a man who has seen him to keep quiet. And sometimes that silence is misunderstood. For either being guilty or indifferent, 
But when you get to a point and you can't explain yourself any longer, child of God, keep quiet. Don't seek to prove yourself true to a person who is made up to misunderstand you. Say amen. amen. And you'll be misunderstood in this world. You'll be misunderstood. That's why me, I'm not quick to judge. You remember one time there was a man of God they wrote in the newspapers. You remember, you guys remember very well. And I remember sitting down with the pastor's axe and I told him, you see, this world is attacking this man of God. But I fear that God will raise him up at the point where he'll put them so low. Lo and behold, the Lord has raised the man up again before our eyes. There were 27 or 30 something witnesses against him. Newspapers wrote, radio wrote, television wrote. There is one person you can't pollute. He's called the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now some started coming on television live openly to say we are sorry. We were misled. And the Lord did something in that man's life he had never seen all his 36 years of ministry. The point was whether it was true or not, it was none of our business. He was God's servant. If he falls, he falls before his God. If he stands, he stands before his God. And the Bible says, and lo, he is able to make him stand. Let me tell you, God has a way of wanting to make stand those who you slander. He has a way. That is why I strengthen you. Never be intimidated with slander and cheap talk. He's the God of all flesh. There is no man he can't silence. He can silence anybody at any time. And days can change. And tomorrow the winners lose. And some of you, it's because you're not yet up there. You will be tried. People will say things about you you don't even have a clue about. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what's your position? Believe on God. Believe on God. He will always see you through. He is God. Hallelujah. He is God. But that must not happen within us. Let it happen outside. But not within a man who met grace. Praise the Lord. I was telling somebody that people submit to many things. Eh? By the way, one time I think I shared it. People submit to many what? Things. Some people submit to phone calls. He's my spiritual father because he answers my text messages, right? <laughs> Some people submit to gratitude, right? One time he gave me money when I needed rent. This, he must be my father. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people even submit to what they know about you, period. You see, Jesus was working with thousands of men and then one time he wakes up and the guys had gone. <laughs> but they were there when the miracles were happening, signs, and then he turns to the twelve and asks them, are you also going to go? And twelve stayed. Do you understand? Because I always tell you, there are those who hear you when you say nothing. Those ones are there. You don't even need to explain to them anything. They know. That Rita is innocent. Oh, this is the devil trying to frustrate her life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, anything can be heard from without. But if there is one thing that destroys a ministry within, it is cheap talk, gossip and slander. You sit different places discussing different people different people. People have left ministries because of other people's words. You enter church and you feel like you don't even find peace anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're going to remember a sister who spoke to you. There are people here who don't even talk to each other. They are seated in the same meeting, but they look at the person and say, Mulave, you know? And they are all going to heaven. 
Do you understand? They are going to heaven. Even the worst enemies on internet have reconciliations where they work together. Even the men of the world, you hear Simanya iPhone sued Samsung, Simanya they are taking patent rights of their thing, the two most competitive things in the world. Then you go and then you read, you realize, actually, Samsung is manufacturing OLED screen technology for the next iPhone. So, you look at their market and realize that actually every year their OLED screen market sells higher than phones. So, even if their phone industry dies, they give OLED screens to iPhone. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yes, they are like enemies, but they have a place where they reconcile and can sell it us even work together. These are secular companies. You can see them as enemies, but they are not, because there is a place of reconciliation. They have understood that they need each other. Huge conglomerates. But Christians don't even have the basic sense to say, am I destroying this brother or sister, supposing tomorrow we need to work together in something? How am I going to look at them? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, speak evil of no man, but only that which is good. 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 It's a hard thing to speak good about people who are evil. Eh? Sometimes. But speak good. Avoid cheap chatter. Now, there is... I want to share something called wise questions. Wise what? Questions. There are about four of them. Eh? Say amen. Now, when somebody comes to you with gossip, eh? the first thing you do, kill it. The moment you sense it, kill it. Don't finish the story kill it. Some of you first finish the story. <laughs> no. Don't finish the story. Kill it. The moment you sense gossip, kill it immediately. Because it's a spirit. Confront it the moment you sense it in your spirit. Am I clear? The moment you confront, you see that this person is going into the way of gossip. Confront it immediately. By wise questioning. Such that the person can answer themselves. Are we together? Because when a man answers themselves, they judge themselves. You don't need to judge them. So there are wise questions. Usually when I deal with someone with gossip, I ask wise questions. Because every answer judges them. The Bible says in Job, for your mouth, you condemn yourself. I don't want to even be the one to judge you, no. I put something on you that will judge yourself. The first question I ask, and I want you to write, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me? Write it down. Why are you telling me this? The essence of that question is to make sure you help this person gauge the difference between intent and judgment. That if his intention is right and his judgment is wrong, we shall know from there. Some people have the right heart, but their judgment is wrong. If your judgment is really wrong, but your intention is right, then when I ask you that question of why are you telling me, I expect you're going to think, nah, yeah, by the way, why am I telling him? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'll come to that a bit later. Oh, I'm telling you because I'm concerned. Oh, I needed someone to confide in and you're the only person I trusted. Ah. Why are you telling me? Okay, then, second question. What is the difference between what you're telling me and gossip? 
uh, right. I am very serious. Write it down. What is the difference between what you're telling me and gossip? Proverbs 17 verse 9. Read. Read. One, two, let's go. Read it again. Exactly. If you're seeking love, why are you telling me instead of covering it? Come on, answer me. He that covereth transgression seeketh love. That means you don't come seeking love, you come seeking discord. If you are in love and really love that brother or who you're talking to, even me, you'd not come to defile my conscience. You're not walking in love. And how can you be wrong in love and still be right in principle? I'm telling you because you're the one I trusted. Trusted to what? To carry gossip? <laughs> like my spirit was attractive. Answer me. Was my spirit too attractive for you? To trust me? The fact that you're already uncovering a brother or a sister means you're not loving. But then that deception is in charge. They come with, you know what, let's pray for Brother Richard. He has a problem. <laughs> and quite honestly, if you're mature enough or even have the basic instinct of maturity, some of you realize there's stuff that you're told and you realize it's none of your business. The person they're talking about is even none of your business. You don't even have a right over them. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Am I making sense? You, it's not even any of your business. It's not what brought you there. It's, not, it's nothing. It's not why you came to ministry. It's not why you know them. It's, no, you, you don't, they are not even your bad days that you're tight. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, first question I said was, repeat. Why are you telling me this? Number two. What is the difference between what you're telling me and gossip? Intent, judgment. The third one is harder. I usually ask, how is your telling me this thought, this complaint, this issue going to make me and you love God more and the brother or sister you're talking about. Praise the Lord. How will it meet us together in the bond of love with the brother and sister you're talking about? Is what you're telling me going to make me love God more? Is what you're telling me going to make you love God more? Is what you're telling me about that third party brother or sister going to knit us together in a bond of love? Because our instruction is simple before God. Love your neighbor even as you love yourself. If you can't stand in public and tell them, I'm a thief, how come you're telling other people that they're thieves? You're telling on other people that, how come you, you can't stand and tell people, I'm a thief. Love your neighbor even as you love yourself. If you can cover your nonsense, cover the other too. Simple. How does what you're telling me how is it going to make me love God more, you love God more, and knit us together in a cord of love with a brother that you're trying to destroy? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So after we add that, I go to the last point. Now that you've told me, make sure you tell the brother that you told me. Because how long must I give you time to know it is sin to speak in the back of the other? I can attend your telling them, but I can't attend a performance where you're telling on them where they are not. 
Here are many of them I tell them, make sure you follow through and tell them you told me because I'll tell them. I'll tell you why. You cannot cover for a gossip because you're a gossiper yourself. You cannot cover because put yourself in a situation. What if the man or woman they're talking about? Let me read for you some Exodus 23, verse 1 to verse 2. It says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not, listen, thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Don't put your hand with a wicked man to be an unrighteous witness. Don't. If they are wicked, let them be wicked. Don't be in it. What does the next verse say? Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Covering up a gossiper means that you're extending the arm of them to continue their ministry. And that's the thing about gossipers. All of them, the first thing they tell you is, Tell, promise me. Promise me you're not going to. You see, they are asking you to promise them not to do to them what they are doing to the other. I don't get it. And you are born again of the Spirit and you also accept that promise. No, seriously, some of you have demons on you. You don't see how much. Promise me that you won't kill me for killing. You understand? That means you are an accomplice in the kill. You are one and same with them. Many of you church members know every time somebody speaks something about another, usually you know. I call all of you. How many of you are witnesses to that? Put up your hand. Don't fear. Put up straight. You are witnesses, eh? I call, I, who, you said what? And yes, all of you come. The one who said, the one who was said about, the one who they didn't say about. All of you come. Why? Because we need to walk in light. Because listen, what's the point of you saying behind my back what you can't say in my face? What's that called? So I call them, the three, four. And then I say, huh? Let's talk. You, you said what? To this. Okay. Gundi told me last week that you said, oh, how could that girl say on me to apostle? And then I start from there. Is the problem that she said on you or that you need to walk in light, void of offense toward man? Do you value God or do you value your person? Why? Because when I do that, I separate myself from the thing that will frustrate the presence of God upon my life. That is important. I value this relationship right here. I can lose anybody. Not the relationship I share with the Holy Spirit. I can. I can't protect a friend eh, to frustrate and grieve the Spirit. I can't. I would rather grieve the friend and please the Spirit. Because some of you, you have the Holy Spirit plus your friends. Me, he's all I have. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He's the only entity I can trust. Do you understand what I'm saying? He is the only one who will abide faithful. So, some of you are in the habit of protecting people who spread rumor. And you think that you're safe. But you're one and the same because you've extended your hand on the evildoer. Why? He's because of that, that individual is going to continue to destroy others. You've not brought it to a halt yourself and fixed it. That means you are part of the chain that is being transformed through gossip. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why the first thing is I make sure I tell you I either go to them and confess that I told the apostle, or I'll make the meeting. I'll make sure we kill it. And amazingly, this is the funny thing. 
Every time I've done that, these people have ended up to be the greatest friends. Because the devil left their midst and they saw themselves as they are true children of God. Forgiveness was easier. That is why when a man can cover the sin of another, you can never trust them again. The gossip of another, you can never... Why? Because it's like, I'll give you an example. What if they destroy a dear brother or a sister? You keep quiet. They continue, then tomorrow they destroy them totally, and they're destroyed. And then you remember, you are part of that chain. You could have stopped it by putting it on that table and killing it from the root. There are people who don't leave my office. I'm always calling them, Nay, you, why don't you keep quiet? There you go. Two months later, Nay, you, what's wrong with you? Why don't you keep quiet? Because what is on them can't stop. It's a spirit. But they are helped because somebody brought it on the table and said, Brother, Apostle, I'm sorry, but this was happening and I'm ready to face this person. Because the moment they bring an issue, I tell them, Are you ready to testify? They know now you're in trouble because you're going to testify by force. You're going to testify by force. Why? Because me, once I hear something, we go to its detail and deal with it and kill the spirit and restore and rescue these victims. Are we together? Are we together? And I'm sending a very strong warning on you who cover gossipers. A very strong warning on you who cover gossipers. You'll be destroyed with them. Because that's what the Bible teaches. I promise you, that same spirit, when God judges, you will not survive. And say, ah, me, they just told me, I even say, don't tell me, ah, no. You'll be destroyed with them. Because you're harboring, you're providing, you're giving occasion to the same spirit that is destroying saints. So usually at last I tell the guy, how long do you need me to give you time? Do you need a month, a week, tell me, so that after that time I go to that person and tell you, uh-huh, did Rita report herself? No. Okay, Rita, go in my chambers. We sit in the office and say, uh-huh, now report yourself before I report. Because if you don't, you're already sinning. You're in the sin, right? So I want to know how long must I give you for you to know that it is sin? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. How long must I give you for you to know that it is sin? Because when you realize it, you'll go and make peace and say, Why? Because the principle that should be for our ministry must be, and this is the rule of the thumb, always to the individual, not about the individual. Write it down. Always to the individual, not about the individual. If I have an issue about with Robert, I will go to him and tell him, Robert, I have an issue with you. Always to him, not about him. If I fail to reconcile with Robert, the Bible teaches I should call Robert again with another person. And address the issue with the third party always to him. But not about him. If that second party refuses, the Bible says bring a third one. A third person. Bring two with Robert. Always to him. If they refuse, the Bible says put it before the council, the elders, the few pastors and say we have failed. If after that Robert refuses, the Bible says regard him a what? Heretic and an unbeliever and have nothing to do with him. But don't discuss it in his absentia. However bad he is, you're never right. Are we together? So, many of them at the last most sobering moment is when I ask them, so, after understanding all this, when you realize that the brother or sister had a problem, what were you supposed to do? Somebody tell me. What were you supposed to do? If you realize that a brother or a sister had a problem, or you've had a rumor about somebody, which might not be true, you understand? Because I always ask people, what if it's not true? 
How are you going to undo everything you've done to her? After all you've done it to her, in this destruction, when you realize it's untrue, are you going to go to everyone you told and ask everyone who you told to also tell everyone they told and ask those who you told to tell everyone they told to also tell the other one whom they told? Are you going to undefile everyone you defiled? No. You're forever putting a mark on that dear man's life, dear woman's life, whom Christ died for. Are we together? So, I'm asking, I usually ask some of them towards the end, what were you supposed to do when you discovered that, oh, you had this and that? What were you supposed to do? Answer me. Give me an answer. What do you do? What do you do? Pray. Thank you. So then, if you were to pray, why are you telling me? Isn't it? If you were to pray, why didn't you leave it there with God? Why did you carry it at and again bring it back to me? That's why I tell people, when you're ready to speak, be ready to speak the whole story and allow the person also to come. When you're not ready, don't open your mouth. Some people bring short state sentences. Hmm, this world. Hmm, I have reservations hmm, about what is wrong with the body of Christ. Hmm, never I. Oh, but some people born again. Uh -uh. Keep it to yourself. The day you're ready to bring it out, narrate the whole story. If you don't be a part of the gossip, enjoy it, hook it, eat it, flip it, go to another house. You understand? Like, do door to door, preach your gospel there until Christ comes back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be a gossip. A gossiper. Say, I refuse to be a gossiper. Say, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to slander. Say, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be a part of any gossip or slander. In the name of Jesus, I forgive and I seek to be forgiven where I have gossiped and slandered. I was called to preach the gospel, not to slander and gossip. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Deal away with that spirit and stay born again. It's a spirit like any other sickness. We are not going to hold you eh? accountable and judge you, but bury it and move on. Stop gossiping in the church of Christ. Stop it. Because now in future, if you have attended school of ministry and I discover you to be a part of gossip, of course you have a grace period to make right. But if we discover you, we'll be hard on you a bit. And what I've preached, people listen to me. There are some of you, you're going to be alarmed after here. They are going to start sending you messages, brother, let's come clean. I'm telling you because people hear and they say, hmm? <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Some people fear God. Some of you are already in trouble after here, but don't worry. <laughs> there will be what? Forgiveness between you and the parties who you have wronged. But that nonsense must not be heard in the gospel. Some ministries fight each other. You have heard rumors between ministries fighting each other on basic stuff. And some of those wars are creeping into our turf. T-U-R-F. And here is my advice. Keep quiet. Don't contribute anything. If you're to be wrong, stay wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're to, be, to stay the, the, the evil one, stay evil. But don't talk anything. Because there's always a day where God talks for you. And it's wonderful when he does. Deal well with people who are still in the process of growing. Because you might need the same grace one day. Some of you, you're still too young. You have not worked with God long. You have not been tried. 
like some people, like the Bukenyas who have walked with God for 50 years. Do you understand what I'm saying? So who are you to judge Mr. Bukenya when you've not even walked a quarter of the journey of this salvation? How are you sure what will engulf you in a few years? And do you think there will be grace to help when you didn't extend the same grace? Definitely what you sowed, you will reap. There are some people I look at and I see they are already under a certain cloud. They are stuck. But it's because they've destroyed fellow sisters and brothers in the Lord. People's souls are bleeding because of you. Why don't you keep quiet? Why don't you just end some relationships? That's why in me the moment I realize that someone talks a lot. Some of my conversations reduce. They might even never know. But if they follow through, they'll realize my conversations have reduced. Why? Because I'm a servant of God. There are millions waiting for me. And this can kill the anointing. It frustrates the anointing. Because you start ministering falsehood. Even when you're speaking truth with your lips. But the spirit realm is already corrupted. That's why many of you know I don't sit down to discuss others about you. Oh, I don't sit with you to discuss others. Now this guy, no I don't. I refuse it. Why? Because I know what it does. You're going to discuss somebody with somebody and then tomorrow there's going to be a reconciliation anyway, but you're going to leave wounds, right? Because you can't hold your mouth. Praise the Lord. I hope you receive this in love. I hope you don't go hungry and then start opening another spirit. Because if a man is possessed by this, there are people I've talked to for years and they've refused to change. But we still try until the day God, for me, by the way, God just tells me today end it. That day I do. I'm patient, but when the Lord tells me cut this, I cut it. And that's the thing you should do. Always open a relationship when the Holy Spirit tells you do. And when the Holy Spirit tells you end it, end it. There are friendships. Me, I woke up in the morning one day and God told me, don't open that door of friendship ever again and I closed it there are some I tried to open by force. oh God I still like them and then it costed me so may I befriend people the Holy Spirit tells me to befriend yeah if you have spoken about me eh? listen very clearly I will not speak for any of these men of God even them they will have their turn but if you have spoken about me Apostle Grace I have forgiven you you understand I have what forgiven me because you as an individual you're too small to destroy me too small to destroy me praise the lord so i've what forgiven you so i also ask you to do the same don't seek explanations eh? even you do what if somebody has gossiped about you you now you say it loud loud if you've spoken about me say <laughs> mention your name now uh-huh. You say, I have forgiven you. <laughs> now there is a message that has come from the other side. It has crossed to the other end. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say, I have what? Forgiven you. Because that is too small to destroy me. Say it. Yeah, gossip is for small people. So tell them you are too small to destroy me. Too small, too small, too small, too small, too small, too small, too small. When a man stands before God, they can't be broken by men. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Because the entrance of your word brings light and giveth understanding to the simple. May this day spell healing and restoration. May it create an atmosphere for men making peace. And of those who have wronged each other to come clean and say, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Because we love you. We want to walk with you above anything else. And there is nothing as important as serving you and walking with you, God. Bend us, kill us. Deal with us whichever way you want, God. Because we must come out hewn, perfect, pruned, and established, ready 
to serve you. We cannot let small things destroy us. We cannot let little things frustrate the anointing of God upon your lives. Father, I want to believe that every man here values you more than gossip and slander. That they value you more than cheap talk. And I want to believe that this week and coming days, men are going to meet each other to restore and reconcile. I pray that for everyone who has wronged the other God, I pray that you'll bring restoration. That whoever will go to ask for forgiveness, they'll be forgiven. And whoever needs to forgive, they will forgive. Because there is nothing as important in this season as to serve you and do your will, God. Father, I pray for them which are weak in this area. Separate them from the sin in them. Let them, let them understand that today I was not attacking their person or their identity. I was attacking the spirit at work in their lives. And let them separate themselves from it and move on to be better people. It's the one spirit I know no man can come out or hardly men come out to say that I have. But I know that if a man examines themselves, they'll remember all the evil they spoke about the other. The times they didn't cover brethren. The times instead of praying they exposed their own. The times when they saw, spoke falsehood. The times when they stabbed men which were bleeding. The times when they destroyed the lives of those who are in the process of being perfected. And they didn't extend the same grace. Forgive them God. Let them see like you see. There's a reason why you're in heaven and quiet. And covering men each one. May you teach us to be so. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. There are people here. You have been stuck because of gossip. I ask you by God. Make right. Make right. With whoever you have destroyed. And walk with God. Because there is no point in getting your life stuck. And frustrating your personal relationship with God. Because of cheap talk. Go reach out to whoever wronged and make peace with them and tell them, you know what, I'm sorry. If they don't forgive you, that's okay. You say sorry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Honor God and fear God more than men and what they can do to you. You will see God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Can I do one thing before we finish? I want to pray for somebody here. And I believe many of us, eh? I cannot say all of us, but a majority, a large majority of us are feeling like this year we are in a very sensitive period and time. And we are hungry. And we are thirsty. I want to pray with you. Father, will you know our hearts? We are thirsty and hungry for you, God. We are willing to lay down everything for the sake of the gospel. Our spirits are willing. And our bodies will surely respond. God, for that man and woman who is hungry and thirsty, fix us. For anywhere where we have been in the flesh and kernel, and walked after the flesh, God. Kill our flesh. But we seek that we walk with you, God. We have a hunger and thirst in our spirits. No one can truly define. But deal with us, God. I pray for that woman and man. That you will deal with them. And let this period indeed be a very defining moment and force. Of our time, God. I feel you're taking us somewhere. And I pray that every man and woman here goes along with us. 
God our nation has a grace and visitation that you're pouring out on us. Let us not lose it. Cause us to be hungry and thirsty for more. And after we've received, we become thirstier for more. Cause us to settle and be planted. There's a man and woman in this room who is not serving God in the ministry. I pray that God will place you in your rightful place. Because the harvest is plenty indeed. The laborers are few. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.